The pressurization system on an aircraft is one of the most important systems for the safety and comfort of passengers and crews. But why are these systems required and how do they really work? Let's get into the nuts and bolts of it. Commercial aircraft fly best at high altitudes. This allows them to fly faster as the air is less dense, which means less drag. This also helps enhance fuel efficiency, thereby reducing costs. Now, whilst this brings several benefits from a commercial point of view, flying higher has the exact opposite effect for humans. The human body needs a certain density of air to maintain an adequate intake of oxygen. Now, as we go higher up into the atmosphere, the air becomes less and less dense. The air molecules spread out more, decreasing the density, and with that, there is less oxygen available for each breath of air. All this makes it increasingly harder to breathe for us. At around 18,000 feet, the amount of oxygen halves compared to what we normally have at sea level. As a matter of fact, going much higher than 10,000 feet without the help of modern technology can cause altitude sickness, also known as hypoxia, which is a serious medical condition that can lead to dizziness, headache, difficulty thinking, unconsciousness, and eventually loss of life. Hypoxia can be very insidious. Clearly, this makes it imperative that a solution be implemented for aircraft that fly at high altitudes. And this is where pressurization systems come into play. As an aircraft climbs and the air outside gets less dense, pressurization systems on an aircraft induct air into the cabin to maintain an adequate level of pressure inside the aircraft cabin. In other words, the air inside the cabin is denser where there are more air molecules per given volume of air when compared to the same amount of air outside the aircraft. And this makes it possible to breathe comfortably. Now, having talked about the importance of pressurization systems and why they are necessary, let's see how these systems work. Apart from delivering thrust, jet engines supply high pressure air through something called the bleed system for various systems on an aircraft, one of which is the air conditioning and the pressurization system. Air is bled usually from the high pressure stage of the compressor of a jet engine and goes through components such as pre-coolers and air conditioning packs, which allow for the bleed air to be cooled for conditioning the flight deck and the cabin. Air for this purpose can also be provided by something called the APU or the auxiliary power unit. It's a small gas turbine in the back of an aircraft that can supply air for the pneumatic system, albeit with limitations on the maximum altitude at which it can be used. The APU would be considered as a backup if the bleed system was not available from the engines. The air conditioning system is supplied by air processed through two packs that regulate airflow and temperature as required. Aircraft air conditioning systems mix hot and cold air to achieve the desired temperature. Now, the systems vary by aircraft types, but the principles and operation of the air conditioning uh, system are the same in all aircraft. The primary components of the air conditioning system perform the functions of controlling fresh airflow for aircraft pressurization and ventilation and control the flight deck and cabin temperature. The pressurization system is controlled using something called cabin pressure controllers. These are digital computers that control the amount of air that is allowed to escape the cabin through something called an outflow valve. Now this valve helps keep the incoming air inside the cabin and then it releases it at a rate that is regulated by the pressure controllers. Now let's try and understand the concept of something called aircraft cabin altitude. For an aircraft that was flying at around 39,000 feet, the cabin altitude would typically be around 8,000 feet. 
What do we mean by this? Put simply, if we were standing on a mountain that was 8,000 feet above sea level, the density of air that we would be experiencing on this mountain would be akin to flying in an aircraft with a cabin altitude of 8,000 feet. Just an easier way to explain the concept of cabin altitude. On a side note, not all aircraft incorporate bleed on pneumatic systems. For example, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner employs a bleedless architecture and uses cabin air compressors to provide air for air conditioning and pressurization. Also by design, it can maintain a relatively lower cabin altitude at high altitudes, which makes it more comfortable for the passengers and crew from a physiological standpoint. To quickly recap, pressurization systems are needed on aircraft that fly at high altitudes. As a lower air density there means there isn't enough oxygen to breathe comfortably. An aircraft's pressurization system typically uses the engines to extract high pressure air, which is then cooled and conditioned by the air conditioning packs, which supply the conditioned air to the cabin. To keep the cabin pressure at a comfortable level, cabin pressure controllers regulate the extraction of the cabin air via an outflow valve. This maintains the cabin altitude between sea level and about 8,000 feet, which allows for normal breathing. The greater the pressure difference between the cabin and the ambient air, the lower the aircraft cabin altitude. All right, so we've explored a vital system on aircraft that operate at high altitudes. You see, the importance of pressurization systems cannot be emphasized enough. This is because if the cabin were to lose pressure for any reason, the consequences can be dire. It is why aircraft are equipped with oxygen masks for crew and passengers. Masks in the cabin are designed to deploy from the overhead panels automatically should the cabin altitude exceed a preset value and they will provide crucial oxygen supply while the aircraft descends to a safe altitude. Pilots are actually trained to execute a maneuver called emergency descent in the event the aircraft were to experience a decompression or loss of a pressurization where they would initiate the descent uh, to bring the aircraft quickly to a minimum safe altitude, usually around 10,000 feet if terrain was not a limiting factor. Interestingly, some aircraft, such as the Airbus A350, can carry out the emergency descent maneuver automatically using the autopilot should the system detect an unsafe cabin pressure. I hope this little explanation made some sense and it wasn't too difficult to follow. As always, uh, if you have any questions or comments or you would like a certain topic related to aviation or flying covered, uh, please put that in the comments below and I will do my best to cover it in a future video. Thanks very much for your time and support and I look forward to seeing you in the next one again very soon. Thanks again and I wish you a great day.